It's time now for Voices of the Region. Each week we hear from an area journalist about the stories they are covering. Northern Community Radio News Director Heidi Holton from Grand Rapids is our guest this week. A lot of people think that the summer is the big time for visitors in northern Minnesota, but they haven't been here for deer hunting season. Our communities swell with people. It's a great economic season for the small towns of northern Minnesota. In fact, the DNR says that hunting generates nearly $500 million annually. So we've been working on stories for deer hunters about the season, reminding hunters to check with the Minnesota DNR and their website to find out what regulations they need to follow. Some hunting districts in our region require chronic wasting disease testing. That means you'll have to bring your deer to a testing site where the DNR will take the head of the deer to test for chronic wasting. So along with the testing for chronic wasting, this year the DNR is asking for hunters for assistance to look for neonicotinoid exposure in deer, and they want us to send in our spleens from the deers that we have harvested. Neonicotinoids are the most widely used class of insecticides worldwide. So that fall of 2019, we just started this pilot study where we were trying to solicit our deer hunters to send in their spleen. So we could actually just try to gauge what the concentration levels were if we could even find them from wild harvested deer. And we did. Those, those results that you were talking about back in March show that about 61% of the nearly 800 spleens that were sent in had some level of, of neonics found in them. So that you know that was pretty pretty surprising. Um, the interesting thing is that you know we were finding evidence of of neonics from across the state. We thought that maybe in the northern part of the uh, the state we might not have as much evidence, but we found it all across the board. So we are trying to do the same thing again this fall. We are also interested in deer hunting traditions, and we are asking our listeners to tell us their stories. We went back in our archives to listen to Heather Hansen from 2019. She is a hunter in Grand Rapids. I've been hunting for a while, and the reason that I decided to is when I was little, I always wanted to be a vet. Hunting was never going to be in my cards. I changed my mind when I realized that vets had to put animals to sleep. I wanted no part in the death of an animal. And I remember... My cousin and I, when we were little, would go, we would see at my grandparents' house deer hanging in the garage, and we would always go pet the deer and tell the deer thank you and just kind of reconcile in our, in our child minds what, what was going on. And I knew I wanted no part of that, but I like to eat the meat. I don't know, maybe eight years ago or so, I saw the movie Food, Inc. It's a documentary about the food business, agribusiness in the U.S., and it's just it's horrible, horrifying to watch the way meat is an industry and I mean, and farming too, but the meat part was what really struck close to home for me. And I decided in that moment that if I was going to contribute to the death of an animal, I wanted the life of that animal to be a happier life. So I thought I'm going to, I'm going to hunt. I've only shot one deer and that was three years ago. And it was, that was a hard one because it wasn't a perfect shot. So it took a while for, for the animal to finally go down. And, you know, I had to listen to him cough and it wasn't easy. There's nothing about it. That's easy to take the life of another soul. And so when I did finally get to him and get to lay my hands on him and say, thank you. In Grand Rapids, there was a contentious school board election. We hosted a forum with candidates who was retired educator Mark Schroeder against parent Scott Puglusi. Unofficial results of the election this week had Mark Schroeder winning the election. The conversation we had was not a surprise. It was about vaccines, mandatory masking, how the district had handled COVID, mental health. But we also heard from candidate Puglusi. She talked about concern over safety and effectiveness of vaccines and that critical race theory is being taught in our schools. I know parents are really concerned that critical race theory is going to be taught in our schools. Like, um, you know, that we should feel bad for being white. And that's, parents aren't wanting that here. Um, and I've heard that that's just um, college level. But as we know, you know, social issues tend to trickle into classrooms. And we already already fight the fight of um, teachers sometimes giving their opinions and 
political stances where in classrooms where they shouldn't. You know, as parents, we really want the teachers just to come in and teach math, science, history, reading, English, uh, or French or whatever, but we don't want um, these social issues being brought in. I even posted something about another one like being gender fluidity, like we don't want our kids being taught that. It doesn't mean we're against kids like trans kids or LGBTQ, nothing like that. We're not against anybody. We just, as parents, we hold that responsibility, that God-given right to teach our kids those morals very highly. 